This video lecture is on Unit 1, the American Political System, with the specific focus of the constitutional concept of republicanism. A contextual history of American politics. The unit driving question. So in this unit, we will be considering the diversity of American beliefs, values, and experiences, and how we can ensure people are represented within the American political system. The purpose, assessment, and goal. So the purpose is this slideshow uh, not only provides a contextual history of American politics, but also helps guide your thinking for the assessment as well. The assessment will be centered around building a website over the course of the next week or several weeks, doing assignments that are directly relative to building your website on Weebly, and this is free of charge. Over the, the goal is over the course of the unit, you should have a good foundation to continue your own learning on political parties in America and how the decisions we collectively make politically throughout the whole process shapes the identity and future of America, for better or worse. Foundation of our American system. It has its roots in the constitutional principle of republicanism, which is the idea that we live in a society that elects representatives to ensure roads are serviced, built, schools are staffed with licensed professionals through free and fair elections of qualified American citizens to do those jobs. The American political system has its roots in this idea. Keep that in mind while doing the website and corresponding activities that go along with building your site. The American political idea of representation you will be going to Khan Academy later on in some material that is going to be posted to Google Classroom. That will be in another video in which I will read that article to you, emphasizing specific points in that article as well that you need to pay attention to to understand our American political system and the idea of republicanism. The creation and political identity in America of the 19th century to the present day. What is the Republican? What is Republican in the 19th century? This would be the dawn of what we currently know in the modern day of the Republican Party. This is known by several names today, the Party of Lincoln, also known as the GOP, which also stands for the Grand Old Party. Their symbol is represented by an R, their animal is the elephant, and their election color is red. A chronology of the Republican Party. The 19th century. Formed in opposition to many issues of the Democratic Party of the time, the primary issue that divided the two parties was slavery. The Republican Party used the abolishment of slavery brought about not by Abraham Lincoln, but by the slaves themselves, to obtain political power during Reconstruction. During Reconstruction, the Republican Party becomes associated with big business and industrialism. In the 20th century, the Republican Party was known as the, this was known for them as the Progressive Era, and also, during the, the major defining moment, was the Great Depression during the early 20th century. Spawning various progressive movements, the purpose was to usher in strong middle class and at the same time creating massive um, wealth disparities. During this time, in early 20th century, this was known for two presidents by the name of Roosevelt. Teddy, pictured here, and a Democrat, Franklin Roosevelt but both are considered to be Republicans, and both coming from different parties. Well, how does that happen? After losing the presidency in 1932, with a Great Depression and massive wealth disparity, the Republican Party would only have four presidents in the next 60 years. The majority of the next half century would be dominated by the Democratic Party. Not until the country becomes fed up with massive government expansion and spending do scores of conservative Democrats migrate to a more rule-based government with a small g Republican Party. 1980 and the, Republican Re and the Reagan Revolution saw the culmination of the dominance of the Republican Party during the later half of the 20th century. The very last part of the 20th century and 21st century. For the most part, the Republican Party has traded off with the Democrats for control of the White House, but fared much better in congressional elections controlling either one or both houses of Congress. The Republican Party wins elections with a more unifying message to their base of voters, even when confronted with far superior numbers of Democratic supporters amongst the population. 
chronology of the Democratic Party. So now switching gears to the other party. Although the origins of the Democratic Party can be traced back to Jefferson and Madison, we credit the origin to its starting with the party of Jackson, President Andrew Jackson. One of this political era's biggest legacies was Indian removal and the spoil system, which is also a vocabulary term. The prevailing, world, the prevailing worldview of the Democratic Party was social conservatism with an economic, economical liberal mentality. The party also appeared to rule populism. But in the early 20th century, something crazy happens. The two party fl platforms essentially switch. Teddy Roosevelt breaks away from the party over a dispute with his Republican Party and forms what's called the Bull Moose Party. That, in turn, siphons off huge amounts of, progress of, of votes and, prog and progressives kind of drains that wing of the party, and the Democrats end up winning. The, pro the progressive Democrats were running a candidate by the name of Woodrow Wilson, and he becomes president. His outlook changed the Democratic Party platform significantly, especially for Democrats who came after his fiscally progressive economic mindset. This would lead to the longest-serving president whose legacy is still felt today, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Also known as FDR Democrats, they would promote a socially liberal platform as well as focusing on the welfare of individual citizens in lower and lower in lower and lower middle class economic status. Known as the New Deal, which vastly increased the size and scope of the federal government, which is currently the largest employer in the country today, Democrat John F. Kennedy would galvanize the country with his youthful zest and ideas, but would ultimately be assassinated. Within months of one another, huge Democratic minority ally leader of the party, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., would be assassinated in Memphis in 1968. Taking JFK's place would be President Lyndon B. Johnson, who would also continue some of JFK's social reform platforms by passing the landmark Civil Rights Act of 1964. The nation would be embroiled later, after LBJ steps down, in Watergate political scandal under President Nixon. Jimmy Carter comes and goes, followed by 12 years of Republican rule until Bill Clinton who would leave the country with an economic surplus and a sex scandal that would disgrace the office of the president with impeachment. Most recently, the first African-American president served two terms in office, Barack Obama, with health care being his signature policy achievement. That is, of course, a very quick overview of the last 20th and 21st century politics. And just to get, check in, answer this question on a separate document. Since the main goal is building towards the creation of your Weebly website, I want to stop and take a moment for you to think about what this has to do with the creation of political identity in America. What are the ideas that form the foundation of each party's political ideology? What will be required to have a portion of your page dedicated to the creation of your political party identity? How did the history of American politics form? And how do you think about some of the social, economic, and cultural viewpoints of the two major political parties today? This is an important question because it speaks to the I side with quiz and the analysis you will be required to do as a part of your assessment. It is important you actually think deeply about this to do well on your assessment. The next portion of this slideshow focuses on the political party platforms. Think of this in a simple way. A platform is something that you can literally stand on. Well, a political party platform is just a philosophy you stand on. It is just political. It is simply the process of party leadership taking a stand on the major issues of society at the time, which means they are subject to being changed over that time. Here's an example of a platform. Immigration. No border wall with a defined pathway to citizenship. Criminal justice. Common sense gun legislation without banning firearms. Environmental. Climate change is real, and America should invest heavily in renewable technology. Social issues. Everyone should be happy with who they are. If government can ensure equitable treatment between groups, there is no need for social policy protections. Education. Your schooling up to high school should be provided through taxes. After that, education, education is an investment in you. Make a smart investment. Bet on yourself. Part of the platform is its history. 
Your party has a history. You will be required to write up a brief history of your party to explain why, historically, there was a need for your party to be formed. Below is an example. The Individual Liberty Party is started in rural Illinois as a counter to the big city and big money politics of the elite politicians of America, who have gotten fat and happy off the backs of hardworking Americans. The Individual Liberty Party has never made it an enemy of the upper class. They made it a feature to work together to ensure everyone has the equality of opportunity in America. We have supported the right to own handguns in the face of violent mass shootings, and we believe that the Individual Liberty Party, that firearm ownership is the bedrock of individual liberty. We also have objectives and goals of these political parties in the past. Some Democratic Party goals were ensuring states' rights of property in regards to their slaves. That was in the 18th and 19th century. They also championed the goals of overturning the ban on same-sex marriage in the 21st century, and they've stood on a platform of civil rights during the 1960s and the 20th century. As you can see, the Democratic Party goals, as stated within their platforms, has changed tremendously, as well as has Republicans made the Civil War about slavery and its abolishment in the 19th century, stood firmly against overturning the ban on same-sex marriage in the 21st century, and took a hard line on limiting the government taxing the wealthy too high. As you can see, the same thing exists for Republicans as well. Campaigns and Elections in American Politics It was actually once considered to be unseemly and ungentlemanly to campaign on your own behalf. President Ulysses S. Grant actually refused to involve himself in campaigning or fundraising in the late 19th century. As were minimal, and that is the modern day component of elections. Messaging. One thing that has remained true is that messaging during political campaign in America is huge. Americans love their slogans. Don't change horses in midstream. From Abraham Lincoln in 1864. Grant us another term from Grant in 1868. He kept us out of war from Wilson. Let's make America great again by Ronald Reagan. Make America great again from Donald Trump. No matter the slogan, one thing is certain. Messaging is important. Other ways in which people would be messaged in the past include door-to-door -door canvassing, radio addresses, a small number of TV commercials compared to today, posters, and mail flyers. How is it done today, and how would you do it? These are some questions that you will be considering when completing your assessment. Some election strategies. We are broken down into red states and blue states, and depending on the color of the state, as you can see, Illinois is a blue state, primarily due to Chicago. Uh, the majority of landmass of Illinois is actually more Republican than Democrat. But of course, Chicago has the vast majority of our population. Therefore, the, during presidential elections, Illinois um, consistently goes to whoever the Democratic candidate would be. Um, and this election would probably be no different with Biden. <clears throat> to the right is a map of the 2016 presidential election in which Donald Trump won with the required 270 electoral college votes. What was the strategy? One big thing to understand when it comes to strategy is that it is no sure thing when it comes to any election strategy. Sometimes the circumstances or opportunity plays a role in, in vastly changing your political strategy. 2016 is a great example. This is, this is, of course, oversimplified to the overall big picture. Hillary Clinton felt that she was strong in states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, thus ignoring those states when campaigning. Clearly a poor strategy. Donald Trump capitalized with his adept intuition and campaigned hard in those states, which paved his way to victory. Thus, a historic upset due to the tremendously inaccurate predictions by polling firms. What strategy will you use to get to 270 electoral votes? How will you get your message out? These are also things that you will be considering when creating your website. Again, the purpose of this slideshow is to provide a contextual understanding of American political system. This in no way, shape, or form is comprehensive. Um, this is only scratching the surface, just helping you get a good idea uh, of our system so that way in the coming weeks when we're going and doing these activities, you will begin to become much better uh, understanding of our political system, as well as helping you create a really cool um, political party website for your assessment.